Hello and welcome to another quick fix video and today I'm going to attempt to make some smart furniture. Now you probably are going to say John what the hell is smart furniture and I'm going to say well from my research I can ascertain that smart furniture seems to be some average bits of furniture with some electronics bundled into it which then gets sold for vast amounts of money. Yes and when I say electronics I mean anything from um, power banks to charge things or USB sockets or Bluetooth speakers or even those little pads to wireless charge your phone. Yeah, that's all smart furniture stuff. And uh, I'm not going to do anything that like that level today, but I'm going to take a little bedside cabinet that I've had for a number of years and try and upgrade it. Now, I really don't have any woodworking skills whatsoever. This is the last time I did any woodworking when I made this at school. It's a bread van or a delivery lorry, except it wasn't supposed to be this. It was supposed to be a 30 or 38 ton articulate lorry with triple axles at the back, double axles on the unit. But because I kept making mistakes, I had to cut it down to this. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. You should watch it if you want to laugh. So um, stay tuned. Now, for this video, we've come into another room here at Shea Gardener. Um, normally, I would do all of these sorts of videos at my bench, but for this work, I actually can't get this to fit, so we're down in the dining room. As you can see, in front of us, we have a wheeled cabinet type of thing, which I bought from Ikea in 2003. Now, don't bother looking for it, because I have checked, and it's not available anymore in their catalogue. Anyway. Since that time, I've been using it as my bedside table. So it's fairly basic in structure. It literally has a top, a bottom and two sides, and then a shelf in the middle with four casters, one at each corner. In terms of construction, I'm not expecting great things. Now it appears sturdy enough, and it also appears to have some sort of basic wood veneer across the surfaces, but we'll find out what it's made of exactly when we start drilling. Now, what I haven't actually told you yet is what I'm planning to do with this. Well, like most of us these days, um, I find myself having more and more USB powered devices that need to be charged overnight, largely because I've forgotten to charge them during the day, and also because I'm fairly useless. Now, some things are nice to have, like charging a tablet or a Kindle, but other things are fairly essential to me. So in my day job, I'm on call a lot and I always need to ensure that my phone never runs out of juice. So keeping this topped up is always a good thing. Currently, what I'm doing to overcome this problem is to bring a power bank across to the table and plug everything into that. But um, as you can see, the table isn't that big and I end up balancing devices on top of each other, which is not ideal. So to cure that, I'm going to fit a flush fitting power USB charging unit into the top of this table and thus making a 50 pound IKEA cabinet into a 150 pound piece of smart furniture. Right now to get off to the best start, I thought it a good idea to give the cabinet a full clean starting with a vacuum to get rid of all of the dust bunnies that have been building up over the years. And as we're still in a pandemic, a good wash with a disinfectant solution should finish off the job. Excellent, now that's done, let's lay out what we need to complete the actual task in hand. So at the top of the table, you can see what you get in the USB desk charger pack, and below it, the hole cutter, which was purchased specifically for this job. Let's start with the charging unit. Now I bought this from Amazon and I've put the link in the description. In fairness, there are loads of these out there, but for the avoidance of doubt, this one is branded as a Simpeak device. Now in the box, you'll get a figure of eight power cable, and I think this is officially called an IEC C7 cable, and this terminates in a UK plug. Naturally, I am expecting that if you buy this in a different Amazon in a different country, it will terminate in a plug for your country's electricity system. Obviously, along with all of this, you'll get the USB charging device itself and two grommets or ferrules 
which hide the rough edges of the hole and allow the USB charger to fit snugly at table or desk level. If you've seen any of my DIY project videos before, you'll know that quality isn't what really I'm known for, so it won't surprise you to find that I didn't read the description on the listing when I bought this, and I therefore didn't realise that there were two ferrules in the box uh, for differing sizes. One is a 50mm in diameter and the other is 60mm um, in diameter. And primarily this gives you the option of converting something like um, one of those old office desks which already has a hole drilled into it to cope with cables being fed through from the monitor or desk phones into having a USB charger but without drilling any holes. However, I didn't have that luxury so drill we must and to do that I bought a 60 millimeter hole saw at the same time as I bought the charging unit there's nothing really much I can say about this it's Chinese you have the center positioning drill which screws into the hole cutter and that just fits straight into the drill chuck so we've been through what extra things we needed to purchase and now we come to measuring up all I'm doing here is measuring the width of the sides of the cabinet. I want to do two things. One, I want to ensure that when I drill I'm not hitting the sides. And two, I want to make sure that the circumference of the ferrule isn't too close to the edge. Now I'm using a China Graph pencil here to mark things out and that's only because I find the marks they make easier to remove than a graphite pencil once we're at the end of the drilling. Then we mask up the area so we get a smooth cut without any splinters or rough edges. Now that the preparation is done it's time to start the drilling and even I know that you start this with a pilot hole. A small hole that gives you a substantial centre point which you can enlarge further down the line. Now that's all done, there is no more putting it off. We have to drill the hole itself. And as I quickly learn, this is very much a marathon and not a sprint. So I'm starting this off using my standard 18 volt cordless drill, which should be able to deal with this without any issues. So that's my first failure. It hadn't screwed the hole saw into the center bit correctly and it came loose. Now amazingly it appears that the 18 volt drill can't hack it, so I decide to change it out. Let's bring out the big boy, my 24 volt drill. Hmm, still nothing. Even the 24 volt drill fails to make a hole. Now, how can this be? At this stage, I'm utterly confused by this, but to be quite honest, I shouldn't have been, as you'll soon find out.
still nothing. But now I have my revelation. I asked myself the question, John, when did you last charge the battery packs? And that was the problem. I hadn't charged any of them when I used them the last time, so I needed to put them all on charge. But also I needed to take the top of the cabinet off in order to drill from the underside as well, so that was the next step. Now with the top removed and the drill charged, it shouldn't take too long to finish off. Right, with the hole drilled, you can see the makeup of the table in the, in the bit that's been removed. There's some chipboard in there with some weird cardboard honeycomb centre. So we're hardly talking Chippendale quality here. But then I didn't expect it to be. It was still harder than I thought to drill the hole though. Right, now that we've reached our goal, it's time to sand off the loose edges, replace the top, and to prepare the surface ready for the inserting of the ferrule. Or ferrule or whatever it's called. We're ready to do the test fitting and we can see straight away that it's very loose. Despite the ferrule and the hole both being 60mm in diameter, the fact that the cabinet is made up of that strange cardboard honeycomb construction means that the ferrule can't grip onto anything to make that firm seal and therefore I think we're going to have to glue it in. So I'm using Gorilla Glue here and to be honest it's not my favourite glue. It's runny and claggy and I always forget that you have to wet the surface for it to adhere as I did in this case. So later on I did have to make the surfaces damp and reapply all the glue again. Anyway, there's nothing left for us to do now but to try it out.
So we feed the power cable through the ferrule, plug it into the charger, and then firmly press the charger flush with the ferrule. And finally, we plug it in and see if it will charge my phone. Amazingly it does, yes. John has successfully done a DIY project. I think I need a stiff drink. So I'll leave you with a successfully completed project and a shot which shows you the cabinet back in the bedroom happily charging my Kindle. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.